Hello and welcome to another session on study skills and learning skills. Uh, and in this session, I thought I would talk about the idea of active learning. So active learning right here, that's a key topic for today. And this is in contrast to what I see a lot of people do when they're learning. And that is that a lot of people are just passive learners. They try to, to learn something by passively reading a book or you know, they might listen to the teacher during a lecture or they'll watch a video tutorial. And they're really trying to just engage in this one directional soaking of information rather than really trying to interact actively with the information that they're dealing with. And I want to encourage you not just to sit there passively when you're learning, but to interactively engage with the material. And in this video, I'll talk about some strategies for doing that. And some of these strategies are going to be subject specific, but you'll, I'm sure, think of ways to adapt these ideas uh, to other arenas and to other subject matters. And so I thought the best way to present this is by giving you some examples of things you can do uh, to fully engage yourself and to really interact better with the material that you're seeing. Uh, so one of the first things that I would suggest that you do if you want to become more of an active learner is to write in the margins of the notes or your, or your textbook. And, and by this I mean record your thoughts about what you're reading. Uh, imagine that you, have, uh, that you have the author in front of you and you're engaging in a dialogue. So imagine you're just engaging in a dialogue with the author. Okay, and you can imagine you're putting your thoughts down, tell your author what you think in the margins. Write down summaries. If there are things that don't make sense, write those things down. If there are words you don't know, um, try to underline them. Try to make sense out of what you're seeing. Okay, and that's really going to force you to engage directly with the material. And, and on a similar note, um, if you have lecture notes, if you've taken lecture notes in class or if you've taken class notes, you can also write in the margins of your notes after class. I think it's a really healthy thing to do. Uh, a lot of students will literally take their notes uh, day in, day out, and then the only time they'll ever refer to their notes is right before an exam. I think it's a huge mistake. What you should be doing is literally uh, every night after class, you should be reviewing the notes from that class. In fact, you should be reviewing things periodically to make sense out of them. Okay, and I think if you do those kinds of things, if you actually write notes and margins, you're going to be much more engaged about what you're dealing with. And even more so, you are going to find that you'll have a bit more to read the next time you review your material. And if you have a bit more to read next time, that's just going to enhance your overall understanding, and I think that's a very powerful way uh, for you to learn better. In general, I, I would also just recommend writing a lot. I mean, writing what you've learned. Uh, for example, if you are reading a textbook, go ahead and, and write a summary of what you've read. Record the key points. And, and I actually would often do this with math research papers. I would come up with succinct uh, summaries of the papers I was reading. And my background is in mathematics research, uh, and I would find that uh, I would take these summaries, I would write down any key ideas, any intuition, I would come up with maybe a compact description of any of the underlying theorems and their proofs, uh, to the point where I could at least reconstruct or rederive all the key results in the paper from my notes if I wanted to. And the good thing with that is that my notes were much more compact. Uh, and so I would never have to go back and reread the entire paper if I wanted to understand the result. I could go back and just reread my notes, and that would take me much less time. And then in general, I could add, um, I could just add a lot more information that was relevant to me and, and describe things in a way that was much more palatable to me. Now, in general, you can do this with your lecture notes. I think it's also a good idea to rewrite your lecture notes when you go home after your class. I think you can go ahead and, and I don't just mean this in a way of, of uh, rewriting them in a way that's kind of passive or that's literally copying things over and over again, but, but really kind of a deep rewriting of your notes. And I mean, think of a good way to phrase this, but deep rewriting. And the idea how you, here is that um, you can put a lot more information the second time around. You can organize the notes a bit better. Maybe you can organize them in a way that's much more intuitive to you. You can add more intuition. You can clean up graphs and charts uh, in a way that uh, makes more sense to you. You can put summaries at the end of your notes. Uh, you can put in questions about the material ahead of time. And there's all these different things you can do if you are uh, going ahead and trying to reread or rewrite your notes when you get home. So it's not just about doing this in a rote fashion, but actually uh, using more kind of deep cognition as you rewrite your notes. Okay, and I think it's also a good idea if you do uh, any kind of rewriting of lecture notes or, or taking notes from text, uh, try to do it uh, preferably uh, less than a day after the lecture. So usually the same day of the lecture and really try not to have that, try not to delay this process by more than a couple of days. And, and the reason I say that is because your memory, you're going to be forgetting stuff the moment you walk out of that lecture hall. And so um, if you have the material um, 
fresh in your mind, you'll be able to do a better job of, of writing it down within the form of your lecture notes or really rewriting your lecture notes in a way that's much more easy for you to be able to use uh, later on. Uh, and also the other thing I'll recommend is uh, when you rewrite your lecture notes is do it with the textbook handy. So, you know, do it with the textbook handy. And the reason I say that is because you, you generally want to have, um, you want to make your notes kind of the primary source for your future reviews when you are trying to uh, to go back and, and study for a test. So it's, it's a good idea to include um, additional material at that point. And in, in general, um, you can also not only put uh, salient points, you can add summaries, you can put in concept maps, uh, put in intuition about anything, if, especially if it's a math, uh, a math lecture, you can add some extra intuition about what was going on and that might help you later on with uh, being able to review the material. Now, the other thing you can do is you can pretend, um, as you're kind of reading material, pretend that you have to teach it to somebody else. Uh, and it's a bigger challenge. Imagine that you are uh, doing it as somebody who doesn't know as much as you do. And I think that's a, it's a really good way to improve your learning. Imagine how you would go about explaining that material to anybody. And in, a, in an ideal world, if you can actually find somebody, a guinea pig, to whom to explain something to, that, that's a, a really powerful thing. Um, and, and, and really, the reason I say that is because if you can't explain something, then there's likely something that you don't understand yourself. Um, and, and also, I think in general, uh, when you try to explain something, you really are effectively ensuring that there are no holes in your understanding because you, you'll find those holes uh, as you try to explain it. Uh, moreover, uh, in the process of explaining something to somebody else, you'll identify salient points and core ideas, intuition, and, and so on and so forth that's really critical for, for deeper learning. Um, and in fact, I, I wish you would do this when I was in graduate school. I would, um, if I read an interesting research paper, about a really neat research result, I would go out and try to find anybody who was willing uh, to listen. I would try to explain to them the results from that paper, uh, in part because I was excited about it, but also in part because it helped me to crystallize the ideas in my mind. And, and really, uh, my goal was not just to be able to describe it, but to be able to describe the results from memory, because to be able to do that required that I understood uh, the underlying structure. I could really form a compact representation of the ideas in my mind, uh, and that required me to understand things at a deeper level. Uh, and so I think people often talk about memorization as a bad thing. I think memorization is a great thing from the point of view of not just rote memory, but if you try to memorize something with um, really by, by trying to understand the underlying structure, I mean, the bigger picture for that matter, uh, it's a much more powerful way to memorize something, but it really helps you improve in your understanding of that material. Uh, the other thing I would suggest that you do is to test yourself, really ask yourself questions as you uh, go through the material. And asking yourself questions, again, a very powerful thing you can do. And here I would try to, think of a, try to think of questions that are related to the material and see if you know the answers. If you're learning something in the context of a class, uh, try to think of questions that might come up on the test. Uh, you can even write these questions in the margins of your notes. So it's, it's not just about um, you know, coming up with questions, but try to actually write them in your notes. Uh, so write in your notes. And as part of doing that, what you can basically is when you, when you do take lecture notes, uh, you can actually, what, one method of taking lecture notes is to kind of, like you've got a sheet of paper, um, you can actually leave off space on the side, like maybe one of the margins here. You know, take your notes on this part of the paper, and then when you are uh, reviewing your notes afterwards, you can put questions and other material on the margins, and those questions can maybe refer to items that are in the main body of the notes. And you can do this maybe for, um, when you rewrite your notes, for example, you can do that as well. So in fact, you know, one way to go about doing things is write your notes in class, and then when you rewrite them, rewrite them in this fashion where you can add stuff to the margins. Okay, um, and and really, uh, as you do this, you can you can cover up the answers, you can cover up the notes, see if you can remember how to answer the question after the fact, see if you can recall the answer. I mean, if you really want to aid in your longer term understanding, you can actually try to write the answers down. That's just kind of adds one more level of repetition. But I, I don't want to move you towards learning by repetition. I think that's certainly one way you can help. Uh, with that certainly one way you can help, certainly one way you can memorize something. But I think it's not the, uh, a better way to, to memorize something is to actually um, uh, engage in, in thinking about deeper questions about the material. So don't just limit yourself to rote facts, but think of deeper questions. For example, um, how does the material relate to what you might have previously learned, uh, even if it's uh, across other subject areas? Um, 
you know, I think the key to really improving memorization is to relate what you're learning to what you already know. Uh, on the flip side, you can think about whether or not uh, the concept is the same or different from underlying concepts that you've learned in, in other situations. Okay. Uh, the third thing you can do is you can look for whether there are bigger picture trends or, or core underlying principles related to this material. And I think that really helps with, um, with creating this compact representation that you can keep in your mind later on. Uh, also, think about what aspects of the material are the most significant or important. Um, you know, that's that's another way critical way to go is to think about the the most significant aspects. So, um, you know, add, add what's most significant. Again, something else to think about as you are, are reading. And I really believe that um, if you do see certain concepts, for example, that, that, that are coming up over and over again, you can start to infer that it's an important concept and it's likely to show up on an exam. And in general, I think being able to form deeper connections among concepts is a key facet of effective learning. And you know, while it is possible to memorize isolated facts with enough time and repetition, I think it's far more effective if you try to connect concepts up front and really try to focus on deeper processing. And, and by that, you can also engage in, in deeper comprehension, add visual imagery, add some extra meaning to what you're doing. Now, I think for some of these uh, deeper questions, you're not always going to know the answers when you're first introduced to the material. So it may take uh, a few iterations. It may make sense to you later on. Maybe the first time you look at the material, it makes no sense. So you should be periodically reviewing your notes. And we think of that as what we call spaced repetition. So. Uh, um, it's another concept that you, you'll often hear within the learning realms, spaced repetition. Okay, and so the idea behind uh, spaced repetition is that, um, you know, when you first take your notes, go back at home, uh, review those notes, and then maybe a couple of days later, review them again, because it's likely you've forgotten something within a couple of days, and wait a few more days and review them again, and, and maybe gradually increase the gaps. Uh, and you'll find that doing spaced repetition in these bursts will be much more powerful than trying to cram material at the end of, of a session. OK, so um, I'm going to pause here for this video, and I'll do a follow-on video, and I'll, I'll actually take it up from here in the next video. Thanks a lot, and I will uh, talk to you soon.